All right, let's get started. Hi everyone, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you may be. Uh, my name is Regina Gong and I am one of the members of the um, Open Ed Steering Committee and I am um, co-chairing this um, fourth Open Ed 20 community meeting with Ethan Sinak. Ethan, would you like to say hi? Yes, um, hello everybody. It's really nice to be on video. I know we've been doing a bunch of these uh, in the webinar format uh, because of the size of the meeting, but um, it is great to um, be here in person in however that term means uh, these days. Uh, and I'm really excited to be here with Regina to, to run this meeting. Yes. So, yeah, so we would like to again welcome you and um, as you can see here are our Open Ed Conference um, steering committee members. Um, most of us are here in this call. So um, just, you know, want you to know um, the names of our fellow steering committee members. Um, before we get started with our call, let's set up our mentee first. So we will be using mentee just like we've um, done in the past community calls to do some interactive um, questions. So um, it is really best to use a separate browser that you have been using, um, you know, apart from what you're using now in this call. Um, you can either do um, option one, which is go to menti.com and enter the code 3607 um, 0708, or you can go to um, check the direct link at the chat uh, box. You can take a look at that and click directly on it, or you can use a QR code, whichever you like. Yeah, so now let's get started. Oh, wow, we have Rhode Island there. I wonder who's from there. Oh, so where are you joining from? Please let us know. Wow. Michigan, yay. Texas. Wow. There's a big contingent from Colorado and North Carolina, it seems. Georgia, too. Yes, yeah, so welcome everyone. So you all know, I mean, this is just for fun. You all know the five R's of OER, right? So if you were to choose the six R, what would it be? I know I just wanna relax. That's what I want. I'm sure a lot of you yep. want to do that. That's also the camp I went with. <laughs> Yeah. I'm in the rosé camp. <laughs> rosé, yes. Wow. Rock on. <laughs> I like respect, yes. Yeah, so hopefully that 6R will be... <laughs> The rock on. No one feeling robots, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> robots, yeah. Oh, I like the one that says reimagine. Yes, we like that too. Yeah, that's a good one, Maya. Yeah, so maybe we should go to the next slide now. Yeah, so um, as always, we would like to um, keep you up to date with what we have been doing in terms of um, planning um, for our Open Ed Conference in November. So uh, for now, I'll turn you over to Nicole Allen. Nicole. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much, Regina. Uh, and, and I'm here uh, representing the, uh, the sort of organizing organizations, OpenStack, Spark, uh, University of System, System of Maryland, Kerwin Center, and uh, Colorado Department of Higher Ed OER Council. Um, wanted to share a, a couple of things on the, on the organizing end with everybody. 
uh, at our last meeting, uh, we talked a little bit about the, the process of uh, uh, the working with the hotel that we'd identified in, Ven in Denver and, and wanted to let everybody know that um, we are going to move ahead and officially move the entire conference online. Uh, we are still working out some of the, the details with the hotel, so haven't gotten the sort of official announcement out the door just yet. Uh, but hopefully early next week we'll have that um, uh, uh, out on Twitter and, and on email and uh, we can really uh, uh, move move forward in earnest with planning a fully virtual conference, which uh, is going to be the first in open ed history to be fully online and I think offer some some really, really exciting opportunities to build a conference that includes uh, many more voices and uh, reaches many more places. So also wanted to note that in moving the conference fully online, uh, we are uh, also extending the dates. Uh, and this is largely based on the great feedback that, that the community gave us on the last meeting. Uh, uh, it was originally November 9th through 11th, uh, Monday through Wednesday. And, and we've decided to extend uh, to five days, uh, November 9th through, through 13th, Monday through Friday. So that gives us five days to, to spread out the program. And, uh, you know, while it's, um, you know, it's, 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 it's hard to uh, uh, sort of process that we won't be able to convene in person. Like the reality is that a lot of our community hasn't been able to convene in person at this conference uh, anyways, because of other barriers like funding and, and, and being able to travel uh, across borders and, and things like that. So uh, I think it's exciting to move forward with that, the online planning process. Uh, also wanted to just give people a sense of, of what the timeline is going to look like here on out. I think we've been sort of holding back on making major decisions uh, uh, first because this conference offers us the opportunity to, you know, truly build the conference from the, the ground up with community input baked in from the beginning. So uh, we, we have left a lot of the decision making until we're able to include more voices and uh, that is now fully underway and, and we are moving forward uh, at, at full speed. Uh, the hope and, and um, you know, please, <laughs> please don't hold us to this, but, but letting you know that, that, that our hope right now is to be able to get the call for proposals out the week of July 27th. Uh, and offer four weeks to submit proposals. Uh, we're looking at, at the um, later in August, opening up registration, mid-September issuing acceptances and in, in the program outline, uh, and then early October, uh, the, the full program being published online and of course the conference in, in the second week of November. And uh, also just, just wanted to, to, to quickly let you know that um, the, the program team, the volunteer team, uh, has been hard at work on the call for proposals uh, draft. Uh, where things currently stand, and this, this could shift a little bit, but just wanted to, to be transparent and let everybody know where things are currently stand. We're looking at around 10 topics as opposed to tracks that are, that are really drawn from the data that you all submitted at the last meeting on what you want to learn at the conference. Um, so that includes things like, you know, social justice and COVID and, and sustainability and um, all sorts of, of, of different topics that, that um, uh, uh, cut across different stakeholder groups and countries and contexts. We're looking at uh, presentation types, uh, having the, the usual sort of 20 minute presentations, uh, longer presentations for, for panels that bring together uh, uh, diverse voices and then interactive sessions, and then time for workshops and also looking at asynchronous uh, contributions and um, those being like short videos or posters and uh, alternative formats. And then uh, we're also going to continue the practice of limiting uh, uh, the number of proposals each person can submit to ensure a, a diverse program. Uh, right now, because there's lots of different types of formats, uh, currently thinking about a three proposal per person limit with a maximum of one like in, uh, synchronous session as, as the lead. Uh, welcome, you know, thoughts in the chat or later on in the conversation uh, uh, on, on that piece. 
And now, <laughs> um, one more question we wanted to ask you all. Uh, and I, I, I welcome fellow steering committee members to weigh in uh, in, in, in this conversation. But um, in our last community meeting, we, we asked you all the question of uh, whether we should have an overarching conference theme this year. And the feedback was generally positive on that. Uh, and then we asked you about some ideas for what that theme could be. And the, the responses that we got were so varied. Uh, and we thought really hard about, you know, how, how can we capture this idea of uh, all of these different ideas with an overarching theme. And this is, this is what we, we came up with. We've discussed a lot of different variants on this, whether to do reimagining open, <laughs> reimagining education. Uh, we've also considered other R words, although none that were in <laughs> the first question. But I saw people putting um, some, some great suggestions. And, and yes, Maya did, <laughs> you called it on reimagining. Um, reconceptualize, uh, reshaping open education was another one. Uh, Re-envisioning open education. So uh, lots of other rewords that, that are in there. Um, really welcome feedback on this if, if you want to stick it in uh, in Mentimeter here. And I think just a couple of, of, of points on, on this, you know, if we do go with this word reimagining, we want to recognize that reimagining does start as a mental process, but it needs to be an active process. Uh, it can't just be coming up with ideas or envisioning solutions. It, it needs to translate into concrete actions that actually change things. And I think it, in, in thinking about a theme that, that is inspiring and tries to capture all of the ideas, we really want to put the emphasis on, on action coming out of this conference. So uh, others on the steering committee, things to, to add, fill in there? I was just going to say, I mean, I think, um, you know, this sort of started from the very little pro literal process we were going through of reimagining the open education conference, right? As um, David stepped aside last year and sort of charged the community with figuring this out um, for themselves. And so, you know, I think this stems from sort of that idea, which is like, how are we reimagining this conference in itself? But also there is a need to think about this so much more broadly. There's so much more we can um, and, and need to factor in in terms of context when it comes to open education. How are we interacting with COVID? How are we acting with uh, social justice and racial justice? And so I think uh, this leaves the door open for us to think sort of on some practical levels, but also on some broader conceptual levels. And, and that's why I'm really excited about it. All right, so seeing lots of, of great feedback in the, in the chat, really appreciate that. Uh, and um, uh, unless any other steering committee members want to jump in, I'll, I'll hand it back to Regina. Thank you, Nicole. And thank you for your overwhelming response to our um, theme this year, reimagining, really like that. Yeah, so let's talk about conference costs. And I think someone uh, put that question in the chat um, earlier. Um, yeah, so our next slide, please. Yeah, so we asked this question, if you remember in our previous um, community meeting. Obviously, there's not going to be any in-person uh, meeting anymore. So um, we asked what would be the amount that would be ideal for you as registra registration cost. And um, that was like the range that was, um, you know, that you told us. And so now we are, given that we are going to have an online conference that will span five days, what do you consider would be an affordable fee? And, you know, what do you consider to be a reasonable fee? And also, what would be the maximum that you could um, consider paying? So we put in the lower, which is a dollar, 
and the high price, which is like 400, we don't intend to go over that um, $400 amount. Okay, so I see like right around 131, okay, got lower, yes, 93, almost 94. Yeah. This, the, the, the input that you will um, put in right now will really inform um, our program committee and the steering committee as we um, think about um, what would be um, an online registration fee that would be more inclusive um, to all of us. Yeah, and I see that Maya is saying sliding scale for students and unemployed, yes. Um, for sure, we will have um, a special rate for students. Yeah, so um, I'm seeing right around 100, 106 would be an affordable um, amount for registration. Yes, max around like 170. Yes, and, and we are really looking um, to make this as affordable and as lo low cost as possible so we can um, expand um, attendance. Yes, and keep it coming. So, um, and then of course, we, you know, we ask you to before, um, the following features have been suggested in the past as important, but might increase the cost of um, registration. So how would you balance um, prioritizing this versus um, affordability of, of the conference? So how do we ensure that um, the following features that we as a community want for this online conference gets incorporated without really sacrificing um, affordability? So please let us know. And I saw a bunch of questions in the chat just around, you know, what, what is the budget? What is the cost of the conference? And, and the answer is that it's not, it's not set yet. You know, we, um, and that's sort of our reason for asking this question. You know, one could imagine we could, you know, run a conference totally using like free Google Meet and Google Hangouts, and we could keep the cost incredibly low. But also, that would be probably not ideal <laughs> and very challenging to navigate. So, you know, on the other end of the spectrum is we could, you know, purchase a purchase access to like an all inclusive conferencing platform, uh, which, you know, is one of the options on, on this slide. And so, um, you know, what we want to do is gauge what's really important to the community and to community members. And then what we can do is go back from there. Uh, to weigh what's important, what's necessary, what's a nice to have, mm -hmm. and then we can come back with a budget that is uh, as low as possible to get to make the conference as accessible to, to as many people as possible. Yeah, thank you for that, Ethan. And it looks like, yes, there's an overwhelming support for discounts for students, adjuncts, and others with limited funding, yes. And yes, we will commit to that, to that um, because it is important that we have participation from our students and also from um, faculty who, especially in community colleges who are um, adjuncts. And also there's, um, you know, live closed captioning, yes, for sure, for accessibility purposes, live stream of featured sessions, that is really good too. More live breakout sessions and what else is that? Full featured virtual conference platform. Yes, um, the, the program committee is still um, investigating like what Ethan has mentioned earlier. We want this conference to be robust and engaging and as um, uh, full packed as possible. So we are really investigating um, many of um, conference platforms out there. 
but we have not decided yet. But for sure, um, you know, all of this will be informed, you know, by, by the decision that we're going to make. Can't keep up with the chat, Ethan. You probably can <laughs> take a look at it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, and, and a lot of this stuff, I, you know, I saw Rajiv's question and, mm -hmm. and some other folks asking about like what the budget of the virtual conference platform would be. Mm -hmm. And, and I, there are, there may be other folks from the steering committee that, that have an answer of like what's being considered, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think we wanted to check with, with the community to see if that was something that felt valuable and like you know it seems just from the results here like a pretty low score for social networking tools so i would imagine that like the result of that is we'll probably just you know use existing social media tools whereas like closed captioning obviously incredibly important um, and so maybe, you know, what we'll have to look at is like, what's the cost if that's automated, right? Like some platforms will do that automatically for free, mm -hmm. but it's computer generated. So given how important folks think it is, like maybe what we need to consider is having, you know, human close captioning or, or something. So this is just really helpful for guiding those decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're super grateful for all of the questions that you're asking for all of the input that you're giving here. Um, because this is how we're making our decisions. Um, and so um, we may not have answers for all of these questions <laughs> as, you're, as you're writing them, but we will come back with answers based on the questions and the input that you've given us. Yes, for sure. Yeah, so I think you can move on to the next. Is that for our breakout? Yeah, so segue into the most exciting part of this community call. This is the first time we are doing a breakout session. Um, so I'd like to turn over to Ethan to tell us more about how we are going to do this and what we are going to talk, to talk about during this um, breakout session. Ethan? Yes. Awesome. Thanks, Regina. So um, I would encourage everybody, if you can, and if you're comfortable to turn on your videos, we are going to do some small group breakout rooms. Um, I'm just going to sort of give a quick explanation of what, what we're doing, and then um, we'll break out into, into those so you can get a chance to meet some other folks from the community. Um, so one thing that we've seen demonstrated really clearly on prior community calls is that we as a community value representation, diversity, inclusion, uh, and making open as accessible to as many people as possible. Um, however, we will never accomplish those things without some real intentionality around how we welcome people into the community and how we empower them. Um, this is really something that's a shared responsibility between all of us. So we wanted to take some face-to-face -to -face time today to start building some community um, and also to, to kick off this conversation. Um, so we're going to be doing a breakout room to discuss the three questions you see on the screen right now. Um, what makes you feel welcome at conferences? What are some things that have made welcome, uh, feeling welcome difficult? And what are some ideas and suggestions you have to make Open Ed 20 in its online format this year uh, welcoming and accessible to many people? So I'm going to ask the steering committee members to help facilitate this. So there'll be one steering committee member in each breakout room. We're going to go for 20 minutes and then do a quick report back afterwards. Um, and don't worry about writing these questions down. Once you're in the small groups, we're going to take, we're going to send them around in the chat. Um, but do take a quick sec to, to look at them now and, and start thinking about um, your own experience, because we really want to lead it with this grounded in our own experiences, what worked for you, what didn't, um, and uh, start from there. Um, before we jump in, though, I just really want to quickly run through some general principles for, for having discussions. Um, we want to get into the practice of establishing these norms up front. Uh, we imagine there will be harder conversations. Um, so just some really quick things. If you tend to speak up a lot, make space for others. If you don't often speak up, um, try speaking up this time. It's sort of a, 
uh, make space, take space is the, is the way that gets summarized. Um, listen actively, take time to repeat back and clarify language. I can't tell you the number of times I've been in discussions and debates where two people were actually saying very similar things, but just didn't agree on the specific terms and language that they used, but didn't realize it. Um, and then finally, help make others look brilliant. Um, so these are just some basic conversation norms. Um, Lee just posted a link to a longer document with these and some other um, in norms in practice. Um, so you can take a look at that. Um, but just keep these in mind as you're jumping into the small groups. Um, finally, when you're in there, um, you'll be able to submit your thoughts and ideas via Mentimeter. Um, Nicole has added uh, slides or questions that you'll be able to move back and forth between at your own pace. So do take some time, um, submit your thoughts that way. Um, we will go till 1.47 Eastern time and you'll get a notification when we're, we're pulling you all back. Um, so uh, thanks and good luck uh, in your breakout rooms. We're excited to hear what you all come up with. All right, so uh, we have uh, nine groups of six to seven. Uh, there's an open ed uh, uh, steering committee slash staff member in each one of them. Uh, you know who you are. Uh, and I am going to uh, open the rooms now and you all find yourselves there in a moment. Can I just say, right. it's so nice to see all these faces. I really miss people, my Lord. <laughs> yeah, I just, I switched to the gallery view as we were coming back in and I was just like, ah, oh, this is amazing. Look yeah. at all of these human beings. I know. I, and it's so nice to see, I know many of you and some of you I don't know and it's just so awesome. <laughs> I know, I, I am just like looking like four corners of my screen. It's like, oh man. Oh, yeah. um, well, I, I did promise that we would wrap on time. So I want to um, just run through the groups. I'm going to do your best to keep it to actually 30 seconds, just so because we have one or two other questions we want to get through before we wrap. Um, but I think let's just um, hop into it. Let's start with group one. Um, do you have somebody who can report back for, for 30 seconds on kind of what you talked about? How do we know our group numbers? Yeah, I'm going to do this. So a, 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 kinctious, okay. a kinctious group. <laughs> okay, so my group very kindly nominated me to be the speaker, which I'm not surprised about. But it's the TLDR of our conversation is that we found that the best parts about a conference were actually those like parts of the conference that weren't scheduled. So like the coffees that you have, the social hangouts that you have, the awkward waiting in line to get your badge and like waiting to get your t-shirt and stuff. And so we wanted to find ways to, to mimic that. And some of the concepts we came up with were that um, a session for new folks who are new to the community or just generally new to the OER world would be really helpful. Trying to do like a mentoring system for folks that are um, students or librarians, but not necessarily like putting them to the side, just allowing them to build a community with each other um, trying to find ways to mimic that social time by scheduling it into the into the into the conference. Um, lots of positive feedback about like I think breakout rooms tend to work really well because you can have those conversations. And a great idea that came out of it was also how to create a guide on like how to have good conversations specifically for videos. So like how are we uh, making sure that everyone is speaking or that people aren't talking over each other? And then a really cool concept was how to creating a guide for like good chat behavior um, because sometimes like it's it's easy to just throw like messages in the chat which work for some people but sometimes that might distract the presenter so just making that like part of the repertoire for sessions that you could probably at the beginning of your session like say what your like concept is for um, chat behavior and video stuff and that is our 30 second spiel. Awesome that sounds like a very productive group 
Um, and, and, and just folks, um, I see a couple of people saying like our group had very similar ideas. That's awesome. Do a quick plus one or write it into Mentimeter, um, but share out, you know, sort of anything new that you came up with or anything that particularly stood out. Um, so next up, we're going to go to Tiffany's group, group two. And I was also nominated again, also a shocker. And I'm sorry for being the only person to put their video on, but, um, or at least on the front scream anyway. Um, so uh, our, our, our group had a very similar conversation about uh, having welcome sessions, um, social opportunities, things like that. Um, but we talked about um, kind of working in the like games or things in between sessions or even during sessions, uh, making sure that presenters know um, what features are available to them once we figure out what platform we're using so that they know how to create those sort of interactive options. Um, yes, Jeff, karaoke. And, um, <laughs> and then the other thing that was really important was um, it, being careful about um, language that alienates or um, language that kind of separates the, the no's from the no-nots, I guess, um, the insiders and the outsiders. And so, you know, awesome. like avoiding uncommon acronyms or even common acronyms that we think are common, but really aren't. So um, yeah, that's our spiel. Cool. Thanks. Um, we're running a little bit behind, so keep it to 30 seconds. Next few, next few report back. Um, so I'm going to go, uh, let's see, let's have Jasmine's group go next. We didn't clarify who was going to speak, so I'll just go ahead and, and do it. So we <laughs> essentially said the same stuff. Um, open and mentors uh, was a key theme from our group, especially for those who were maybe new to this community. Um, a couple of like tangible, like not case studies, but examples of other conferences that did a really good job of um, establishing a welcome environment. Uh, open Con, specifically Open Con 2016. Um, there they addressed uh, imposter syndrome. There are a lot of student um, presentations and projects. So that kind of evoked a more welcoming atmosphere. And then um, someone had also mentioned uh, the World Cafe format from OE Global worked really, really well. So if we can maybe do the same um, for this upcoming conference. And um, one another thing that was mentioned was the fact that um, the sharing aspect in the open ed community is what really makes open ed conferences different from traditional academic conferences. So if we can try to keep, you know, along those lines uh, for this year's conference, that would be wonderful. Awesome. Thank you, Jasmine. Um, Lee's group. That's, uh, that's you, Jennifer. <laughs> hey, you don't have to do it, Lee. Um, a plus one on everything that everybody's already said. We had a very similar discussion. Uh, a couple of other things that had been mentioned um, that I haven't heard yet were uh, maybe having the small group meetings um, being decided maybe by interest groups, by, you know, community colleges or higher ed or K-12, or maybe even geographically, so you can work with other people who are in your region um, that you might go to smaller conferences with that you could network with easier. Um, uh, one of the other people in the group mentioned maybe um, in some instances it's easier I think in person than online stripping affiliations from people um, because people might see where you're from or what your job title is and place an importance on that that shouldn't be there um, but other than that it's pretty much plus one on what everybody else said. Awesome thank you Jennifer. Uh, Emily's group Okay, so a few emphases were the importance of having breaks, only having a few sessions back to back and then letting people move around. And the importance of having good tech support and tech practice for presenters to minimize those technological challenges. Awesome, and a record speed report back. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you, Emily. Uh, Regina's group. Maya will start off first. Hey, so. um, 
Tough one on what everyone's been saying. Um, some of the things that we specifically talked about were the kind of importance of first contact. So the kind of registration table experience and having those kinds of personable conversations. Um, also, we were talking about how sometimes um, in especially in an online format when there's a chat function, especially with Zoom, we can't reply to individual comments. So sometimes comments just kind of get lost with the speed of how many people might be responding. So if there's a way that somebody can kind of just acknowledge comments or have somehow um, uh, the, the importance of acknowledgement um, and then plus one on welcome session for noobs as a newbie myself, I would love that. Yeah, and, and to add to um, one of our um, members said welcome session. Yeah, for first time attendee and also um, conf online conference buddy. So um, yeah, that, that will be very useful. Awesome. And um, just as a reminder folks, please, we do have a open uh, question on this in Mentimeter, so please do write these things. We're recording this. We will definitely download all of this stuff because I'm just mind blowing at all of these awesome ideas. Um, so I'm going to go to Haley's team. Uh, we're at 59, so uh, do your best. <laughs> hey, record time. Okay, well, we had tons of great ideas that I'll put in Mentimeter, but some of the ones that uh, haven't necessarily been touched on were um, just ensuring that we have a really thoughtful and robust code of conduct to make people feel welcome. Um, ease of experience and the first impression of conference technology um, and how important that is for folks to carry, you know, whether or not they felt welcomed by the technology. Um, and I think the rest we all touched on in some capacity. The biggest one also, I think, it is just um, being aware of kind of like rock star culture and doing what we can to, you know, ensure that everybody's on a level playing field. Awesome. Last two groups. Uh, Mo, you're up next, your group. Um, yeah, I would just say plus one to all of those things. Um, I think one of the one of the things that we identified was uh, just like more marginalized voices or like more more voices that um, we don't really get to hear from as often um, in the sessions and also like building in mechanisms for people to be able to share their opinions. So like a set like if we could make it so that sessions aren't necessarily like, okay, we're in conference mode now, don't unmute your mic, the chat is locked, like giving people, making it feel a little bit more open to conversation. Um, yeah. Cool. Oh, and also uh, moderating and then, drop in rooms after sessions was another yep. suggestion. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I love that one. Um, Jillian was going to report back for our group, um, but I think she had to hop off. Um, so I'll just say, I think, you know, we echoed a lot of the similar things. Um, we had someone uh, mentioned the idea of pop-up sessions, which I think OpenCon did a couple of years ago, where like you could schedule yours out a day in advance to try to make, to try to make presenting a little bit more accessible to a wider group of people. Um, so some extemporaneous uh, presenting options was one of the ideas our group came up with. Um, we are two minutes over time, so I'm going to throw it back to Regina to, to bring us home and wrap us up. I wish we had more time, right? So, but this is a Friday and it's two o'clock, it's sunny outside. I'm sure you would want to enjoy the day. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we are going to send um, the link to the recording of this session and i hope to see you again next time when is our next call again nicole it's going to be on august 21st august 21st so thank you to all of you for your engagement for your inputs and i'll see you all again next month so take care happy weekend <laughs> bye thanks all